Do you ever change up the look of your cards using mediums or textures? Today I share a couple of easy ways to make a difference. Welcome back to another Take Two with Therese Altenew and today I am featuring the Wave Panel Die. This Japanese inspired die is a real beauty and it works really well whether you want to sort of use it on A2 cards. You can either double it up or use it as a single centerpiece. I've even seen it used to cover a whole background which looks great as well. Today I just kind of wanted to share how using different mediums and textures can really change the look of your products and really make a difference to your designs. So I thought I'd start with a watercolour rainbow and that is always going to brighten someone's day. And one of the best things is when you are choosing rainbow colours to mix together, when they blend together they give you extra colours and don't create mud. And that's just using the Roy G Biv, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. But you don't have to use those colours, you can actually use variations of this. So instead of red today I've grabbed the pink, hot pink. Instead of green I've got sort of a teal green colour. And they still mix in the same way. And I'm also keeping my die handy and just sort of hovering it over top just to make sure that my watercolour rainbow background will be large enough when I die cut it. I don't want any of that white cardstock to be showing. And once I'm happy with my colours and the blending I'll just set that aside to dry really well before I die cut it with the die. This is an intricate die, it is thick cardstock. If you're not sure whether it's going to work or not just do a little practice run through your die cutting machine to make sure that if you need to add a shim you can do it earlier otherwise you can sort of have a peek and then um, rerun it through the machine if you want. And a pokey tool is your friend here. The bits will <laughs> pop out much easier because some of them are tiny. I'm using some liquid glue to adhere it to the front of a landscape A2 card. It's a top fold but I'm only actually adding glue to the center of the panels. I kind of want that little bit of dimension with that watercolor medium to add a little something extra to this design. So the top and the bottom of each of the panels kind of sits off the card just a little bit. But of course you don't need to do this step. You can adhere the whole panel if you prefer that look. And I've kept it really simple and added a circled sentiments, sentiment to the center of the panel and popped it up with some foam tape. But you could add whatever sentiment that you have and even a nice big bold one here would look great. So my second idea is to add some texture but first I want to prep my other images for the design. I've stamped out some stunning securas in a morning frost. So this is going to be almost like a no line colouring effect. And I've got the coordinating stencils. They're going to allow me to add colour really quickly. And I was just showing you there that the images are also in the centre of the insert from where the stencils are. If you're not sure where to add colour or what colours to use, the guide is in there. I want this to be a real subtle look so I've got the detail blending brushes and I'm picking up some really pale pink ink. This is the frosty pink and I'm kind of working from the centre of the petal to add that little bit of extra depth and leaving it almost white on the edges. So I just work through all of the flower petals here. The main thing to note is that sometimes it's a bit hard to work out where the centre of the flower is and, and it's kind of... Um, easier to add that depth in the center. So if you're not sure you can take a peek at the guide in the insert. I've added some pink sand to create my branch and also some silver sage for the leaves. I kept it really pale and you may have noticed that I'm using my sticky mat. It's the grid mat out of the stamp wheel. I actually pulled it out of the stamp wheel and I'm using that to hold my stencils in place so I'm not having to adhere anything down and I'm not even have to mask either because I'm using the really fine detail brush. 
And because I stabbed it in the morning frost, you couldn't see the centers of the flowers. So I thought it was nice to come in with the fine liner and add that detail myself. I could see some of the image within the stamped image, but you could pretty much just draw in whatever um, little circles and lines. That's all it was. And I used the 01, I think it was the finest pen out of the set. And I used the coordinating die to die cut the whole branch. So here's how I'm going to add the texture to this design. I've got some birch wood cardstock. Now Alton New have this in their store and I hoard this like you wouldn't believe and I want to use it more because I love the warmth that it adds to a design and it's actually made from real wood. I wanted to pop this up so to make it harder for myself there's a couple of ways you can do this i actually decided to use some fun foam i do leave my die cut in place in the fun foam add the liquid glue just small dots of it and then adhere the die cut over top of that once it's nearly dry that's when i will start pulling out the inner pieces especially the smaller ones first and then i can remove the whole die from the fun foam and I find that works really well for me. The other way that you could do this is to cut multiple layers of cardstock and adhere them together. You could use liquid glue to do that, spray glue or even double sided adhesive. Both ways are going to take a little bit of time. The fastest way would to be to adhere it directly <laughs> to your cardstock. All right, so I've added a sentiment here. I've also die cut the wave panel out of some moon rock cardstock to create a insert for my panel for the card front and a sentiment that was from the linear spiral stamp set. And then I used liquid glue again to adhere the whole wave panel in place. And then I could just pop up my secure flowers and I like to flip the card over, cut the edges off so it's nice and neat. And then with the leftover flowers, I couldn't not use them. <laughs> so I actually just adhered those directly near the sentiment at the base of the card with some dotted adhesive. I know there's so many different ways that you can change the look of a die or even a cover die or other panel dies that Alden you have. Uh, with colours and mediums, using design paper... You can also use them with um, glitter pastes and there are lots of different options. But for me, I really like how the rainbow panels came out today. I just find this really nice and clean and simple. But let me know, do you actually prefer the more classic sort of Japanese style with the, stu with the stunning Sakura? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And thanks again for joining me here today. Till next time. Bye. Hello there, did that video just spark your creativity? And do you want more project ideas and inspiration videos too? Well, if you do, please make sure that you subscribe to the Altenew YouTube channel. Also, make sure that you do click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching, bye-bye.